you seen this video of Secretary Blinken spreading atrocity propaganda to the U.S. Senate? A family of four, a young boy and girl, six and eight years old, and their parents around the breakfast table. The father, his eye gouged out in front of his kids. The mother's breast cut off. The girl's foot amputated. The boy's fingers cut off before they were executed. And then their executioners sat down and had a meal. That's what this society is dealing with. Secretary Blinken wants you to believe that this actually happened. But the entire story is a lie. It has been thoroughly debunked. Most, if not all, of the atrocity stories coming out are bogus lies. We've seen them get debunked over and over. So it begs the question, where are these lies coming from? Who is behind them? And why do high-level U.S. officials keep repeating them? Well, the answer is likely going to disgust you. You see, there is a sort of race to the bottom taking place right now between competing Israeli disaster relief groups. It's a competition to see who can tell the most disturbing story. Oh, you saw beheaded babies? Well, I saw babies being baked in ovens. Oh, that's nothing. I saw a pregnant mother get raped, baked, then raped again, chopped into pieces, then sold on the black market to the Hezbollah faction of the Mexican cartel. It's all highly unusual, but the lies actually start to make sense when you learn who's behind them. You see, these stories are coming from disaster relief groups that are fighting for media attention and charitable donations. These groups are in the business of raising money. And right now, atrocity fundraising is a gold rush. Very wealthy and very emotional Jewish Westerners are opening up their wallets to organizations and charities. And these organizations are jockeying for position as the best charity to give money to. And nothing raises money like a good story. For example, Eli Beer, the president of United Hatzalah, went on a media tour around the United States telling audiences that babies were placed in ovens and baked to death. A little baby in an oven. They put him in, these bastards put these babies in an oven and put on the oven. We found the kid a few hours later. This propelled him and his organization to the forefront of the media for several days, earning tons of awareness for his organization's work. He was able to leverage this media attention into several fundraisers where he managed to collect a whopping $50 million from shocked and appalled donors. But of course, the entire story was a lie. Israeli reporter Ishay Cohen investigated and determined that the story wasn't true. Another Israeli journalist, Chaim Lenin, said, had this to say about Eli Beer and the bullshit oven story. Like any good Jew who sees the rich, he thought about the money and told a story that does not exist. But this lie not only raised a ton of money for Eli Beer, it did considerable damage to the ceasefire movement and cost thousands of Palestinian children their lives because Zionist influencers took this bullshit story and ran wild with it. Caroline Glick tweeted, they baked a Jewish baby alive in an oven. They murdered his father. They gang raped his mother over and over and laughed all along while they baked her baby alive in the oven. The Palestinians support Hamas. They love Hamas. No resupply. No concessions. No mercy. And John Pateritz, in a tweet that gained 10 million views, said, they baked a baby in oven. He repeats it three times. And then he goes on to say, say ceasefire one more time. You f***ing baby murdering loving ghouls. This manufactured story, manufactured outrage, and provided the media and the politicians with the social space needed to get behind Israel's genocidal war in Gaza. United Hatzalah did eventually concede that the story was not true, blaming it on a volunteer who thought he saw such a case, but not before raising their money and not before causing damage. Hey, I get it. It happens. Your imagination can play tricks on you. Sometimes you open an oven and you see meatloaf. Sometimes you see babies. It depends on the state of mind you're in. Unfortunately, these people seem to not only be in a victim state of mind, but also a money hungry state of mind because they are imagining a lot of bullshit right now and they're using it to raise money. And United Hatzalah isn't alone in doing this. They have a competitor in the disaster relief space called Zaka. And this group, Zaka, is responsible for some of the most obscene atrocity imaginations. These people lied about beheaded babies. They lied about mass rape. They even lied about a fetus being cut out of its mother. And just like United Hatzalah, Zaka 
is hungry for money right now. Their head of operations, Yossi Landau, has also gone around telling media and donors all sorts of atrocity propaganda lies. Father and mother, hands tied in the back, and on the other side, there's two children, a boy and a girl, hands tied in the back, and they were torched. You can see they were torched. Parents should see how the children are being torched, and the children should see how <sighs> parents should be are being torched. And in the middle, there's a full table of food with those terrorists were sitting and eating while torching them. Sound familiar? This is the same story Tony Blinken told the United States Senate. And then their executioners sat down and had a meal. The problem is that it's a complete lie. According to Max Blumenthal from the Gray Zone, despite the presence of multiple potential witnesses, independent testimony corroborating Landau's claim has yet to surface. He goes on to point out that there were also no children that matched the age described by Yossi Landau in Kibbutz Vieri. There are no recorded deaths of siblings around the age of six to eight in Vieri on October 7th. Any record of a young child killed is non-existent. So it's clear then that the story is a complete fabrication. So why did Tony Blinken share it with the United States Senate? Well, it's for the same reason they have been sharing all of their atrocity propaganda lies to provide space and cover for the Israelis to commit war crimes in Gaza. These lies are meant to distract you from what's happening. And now, Zionists are trying to convince the world that mass rape took place. This woman is leading the so-called investigation into Hamas rape, but the investigation is off to a bad start. During a presentation, she shared a picture of a dead female Kurdish fighter from another time in another place and tried to present it as evidence of a raped victim.